In this video, I'm going to show you something really cool. We can get Claude Code to work on our code base even if we're not behind our PC or code editor. What we'll do is deploy our code to GitHub, which is a code repository that developers have been using for a very long time. And usually, if you want to make a change to the project or make your developers aware that they need to make a change, you will simply go to this Issues tab, create a new issue, describe the change that you want to make, and then assign it to one of your developers. But what we'll do is log the issue through GitHub and then we'll get Claude Code to automatically make that change for us. And because GitHub is nothing more than a website, you can access it from anywhere in the world using your mobile device. In the previous videos, we had a look at improving the UI for this application. We want to move this application to production and afterwards we'll continue working on the back-end functionality. But I also want the flexibility of quickly making a change to the application without first having to go to my computer, booting up my code editor, and making a change. So in this video, we are going to look at a slightly different approach to deploying our application to production. In my starter kit video, I showed you the simplest way to deploy this application to Vercel by running the command Vercel dash dash prod. Now this will take your code from your local machine and deploy it directly to Vercel so users can see the changes immediately. But in order to get this step to work, we'll do things slightly differently. The first thing you need to do is go to github.com and then sign into your account. Then from your repositories, click on new, then enter your project name. Then you can select whether this repo should be public so anyone can view it or private, which means only you and people you invite can view your code. Then we don't have to change anything else. Let's simply click on create repository. And now when we scroll down, all we have to do is execute these three commands in our terminal. So simply copy the first line, then back in your project, run this command, followed by these two commands as well. Now I'm not going to execute those commands myself as I've already pushed this code up to GitHub. But if I show you that repository, it would look something like this. Now I've set this repo to private for a reason. As I mentioned at the start of the video, we'll get Claude Code to make changes to this project by logging issues. If a repo is public, it means anyone can log issues against your project. So just be careful because you don't want people in the public space logging issues and then using up your Claude Code usage. Now that we've deployed our code to GitHub, the next step is to deploy it to production on Vercel. So to do that, go to vercel.com and sign into your account. Then click on add new, then project. Then on this screen, you will be asked to connect your GitHub account. Afterwards, you'll see all of your repositories. And in this case, we'll select JSON anything. Then here we can rename the project if we wanted to. But more importantly, we want to set our environment variables. These are all the variables in this .env file in our project. And luckily, you don't have to copy everything over one by one. You can simply select all, then copy, and click on this first field, and press Command and V, or Control and V, to paste. And that will automatically copy across all of your environment variables. Then finally, click on Deploy. This deployment will take about a minute to complete. Now, if you want to learn how to build projects like this from scratch, or if I lost you already, then definitely check out my starter kit video, and then come back to this video. Nice, our project is actually now live. So if we go to the overview screen, we can access our app through this domain. I'm just going to test it out. So let's try to sign in. Nothing actually happens. And that is because we need to copy this domain. Then let's go to settings. Let's go to environment variables. And let's look for the next public app URL. Let's edit this value. And this is still pointing to localhost. We need to replace this with the actual domain. I'm just going to add HTTPS. And by the way, we can assign custom domains to our projects as well. So please let me know in the comments if you would like me to show you how to assign a custom domain. For now, I'll just use this domain generated by Vercel. Let's save this. It's going to ask us to redeploy. So let's do that. Let's redeploy. And in order to get the auth to work, we also have to update Google Cloud Platform. So let's do that now. I'll select my project. Then let's go to 
APIs and services and credentials. Then I'll select my OAuth client ID. Then under authorized redirect URIs, let's add a new URI. Let's paste in our domain. I'm just going to add HTTPS. And we also have to include this slash API slash auth slash callback slash Google stuff as well. I've proactively added my domain, jsonanything.com, because I am going to assign this custom domain to this application. Again, let me know if you want me to show you how to actually do that. Then let's save this, and that should be it. Let's refresh our app, and we should now be able to sign in. I'll select my Google account, and there we go. I was able to sign into my app in production. Now, if we ever wanted to make a change to our application, what you would typically do is make a change using something like Claude Code or another agent or make a change yourself. You would then commit a checkpoint or a commit for those changes. And if you have any changes, you would be able to click on sync and then push those changes back to GitHub. Vercel will automatically detect that you've made changes and then deploy those changes into your production application. But we can take this one step further. We can make changes without using our IDE or computer at all. All we have to do is log an issue against this GitHub repository, and Cloud Code will automatically kick in, make that change, and deploy it to production. Let me show you how. In your project, run the command install GitHub app. Select use current repository, and that will open up this page. Simply click on configure, select your GitHub account, then from repository access, you can select all repositories, which will make Cloud Code automatically available to all of your repos. But what I recommend is selecting a specific repo and then searching for your specific project from this list. Then let's save these changes. And then in the next step, it will take you to Claude's website all you have to do here is go to connectors, then connect your GitHub account, which I've already done. Afterwards, go back to Claude Code, press enter, and press enter again. Then select create a long live token with your Claude subscription. Then click on authorize. And now finally, what Claude Code will do is create this pull request in your GitHub repo. As you can see, we've got my repository open. It's trying to create this pull request and the content of this pull request is actually not that important. All we have to do is click on create pull request and let's scroll down again and click on merge pull request and confirm merge. We can then delete this branch and that's it. And if we go back to Claude Code, we're actually done. So we can just press enter or any key and continue using Claude Code as per normal. Now that we have Cloud Code set up with our GitHub repo, we can do a whole bunch of very cool things. So let's try to make a change to our application. Watch what happens to this go to dashboard button when I refresh this page. So if I refresh it, it briefly shows loading and maybe I wanted a loading spinner instead. This is such a small change and it would be ideal if I could make this change while on the go. So what I could do is use my phone or tablet or whatever and open up GitHub. Then all I have to do is create a new issue. So let's go to the issues tab. Let's say new issue. And let's say change the loading text to loading spinners on the landing page. I'm simply going to copy this into the description. And let's just say the go to dashboard button and the user avatar should show loading spinners instead of loading text. My camera might be blocking the view, but when I refresh this, the user avatar is also showing that loading text. So all I have to do is create an issue. We don't have to assign it to anyone at this point. Let's simply create this issue. And now in a normal development team environment, you could assign this to another developer. But since we've got Claude Code in the team, what we can do now is add a comment and say at Claude, please implement this change. Let's commit this comment. And now we'll just give it a few seconds. And in a short while, we should see Claude code starting up, which it just did. We get this comment from Claude saying Claude code is working and I'll analyze this and get back to you. If we wanted to see what Claude is doing exactly, we can click on view job run. We could expand Claude. And here we can see a dump of everything that Claude is doing. But I'm not too interested in that. Let's just go back to our issue. 
and Cloud will actually give us a proper to-do list with all of its activities in the comments. And as I was speaking, it already added this to-do list and Claude will update this comment as it's making changes. So we can see exactly what it's doing. And look at that, Claude updated all of these to-dos. It's even given us a summary of all the changes that it made. And it's also giving us a link to create a pull request. A pull request is simply a way to take these changes and merge it with the main branch, which is our production branch. Effectively, it's deploying these new changes to production. Let's click on create PR. Here we can see it's trying to merge this new branch with our master branch. And whatever code is sitting in this master branch is what the end user will see. Here's a pro tip for you. If you wanted to test these changes before deploying it to production, what you could do is go back to Vercel, then under deployments, look for the deployment with that branch's name. Remember, master is our production branch. But when Claude makes changes, it will always create a separate branch only containing those specific changes. So we can click on that specific change. Then that will give us this URL. And if we open this, we can test the changes. So I'm actually going to refresh this and I can indeed see that loading spinner. Cool. So now that I'm happy with these changes, let's merge it with our master branch. So in this pull request, Let's click on create pull request and this will run a few checks. And this is really cool. When we expand these checks, we can see that Claude Code is also doing a code review on these changes. Now this might seem silly because Claude Code wrote the code and now it's reviewing the code as well. But remember, this also caters for the situation where you have human developers as well or different coding agents. So even if you're not planning on using Claude Code to make your code changes, this AI code review process is still worth it in my opinion. And now that the code review is done, we can actually scroll up to see a full report from the code reviewer. So it checks things like code quality, it shows you potential issues, performance considerations, security assessments, test coverage, etc. So like I said, the code reviewer is definitely worth it irrespective of whether you're using Claude code to make code changes for you. Now that all checks have passed, let's merge this change, let's confirm the merge, and let's delete this branch. And of course, if we go back to Vercel, we can see the deployment is currently busy, so we'll just wait for it to complete. And cool, the deployment is done. So if we go back to our app, and if I refresh this, I can indeed see the loading spinners have been implemented. Cool. This was a trivial example, but you can pretty much do anything using GitHub that you could do in the code editor. If you found this video useful, then hit the like button and subscribe for more Claude Code content. Also remember to check out my Getting Started video to find out how you can build pretty much any project using Claude Code. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.